Grow My Cleaning Company teaches owners of cleaning companies just like you how to grow your company, make more money, and finally take charge of your financial future and your life. This podcast is about automating and creating systems that give you time and money freedom so you can grow like crazy without losing control. Since this is totally free, if you're getting tons of value, want to support us and make sure that you get more of the good stuff, subscribe, rate, and review to this podcast today. Now, on to the show. Welcome, everybody. So excited to talk to you. Uh, I've been traveling and uh, our plane had issues and I had to uh, stay the night in La Quinta in Charlotte and I just got home in time to see all of you guys and I am so very happy to see everybody. Um, For some reason, I don't have my comments up, but I love seeing what's going on with you guys as I go. So let me see if I can figure out how to make this comment thing work. And then we're going to dive into why and how to compete with and deal with lowball bidders. I get that all the time. You guys are telling me loud and clear that it's really important to you guys uh, to uh, know how to do that. Oh, Jason, ah, Jolu, Jason Johnson beat you, brother. Jolu's always the first one um, to uh, to say hey, and uh, Jason's here. Thanks for the welcome. Courtney, good to see you. Jason, I'll be talking to you here in about an hour and a half. So excited to, to chat with you guys. Anyway, I have a John Casper. Welcome. Good to have you. Karen Coy. Looks like we are good to go. Um, Freddie Gonzalez in the house. Everybody's in saying hi. And I got to tell you guys, I'm so excited uh, to be here in my comfortable little home talking to you guys. Verna says good afternoon. So funny. It's afternoon for me and my body, but I'm back over in Phoenix. So the clock says it's 1030. My body feels like it's 1230. So I'm, I'm for once I can um, I can feel both my East Coast and West Coast folks. Japheth says, hello, good to see you. Japheth, glad to have all you guys on. Gals, uh, Prestige, Shine, Janitorial, hello. Uh, man, we've got so many shout outs today. We're a minute and a half in and all I've done is say hello to all the people that are, uh, that are here. So glad to have you guys. Um, all right, usually what happens is I'll uh, ask for comments or questions or anything you guys need at the end. And then there's, uh, <laughs> Efren says, bring it, Mike. All right, I wasn't gonna, but Efren, Christopher Benavides the third, which is a mouthful, says for me to bring it. And when Efren Christopher Benavides the third says to bring it, by golly, you better bring it. So it is on, people. <laughs> We're gonna do this. Uh, let's jump in and talk about competing with lowball bidders, what that looks like, how to deal with it. TJ Idaho in the house, Princess Kathy B. How on God's green earth do you, I want to be Prince Mike, but I think I'm too old for that. Uh, either way, you guys are both welcome. Let's jump into competing with lowball bidders. If any of you have been into the uh, commercial cleaning business for any amount of time, you have dealt with the issue of people, no matter what price you give, good or bad, saying it's uh, it's too expensive, right? Sometimes we do what we think is a low bid and it's too expensive. High bid, it doesn't matter what you do. A lot of times people just think it's too expensive. Um, the problem is when we try to meet people at their price or what they think their price is or what they're lying to you and telling you their price is, um, it is a race to the bottom. And there's a lot of different things that are going to make your business very hard to grow, certainly hard to be profitable. We're going to talk about why that is going to eat your lunch and how to not do it. And remember, when you compete on price, so many unintended consequences happen that aren't good. Not only are you not good for you, they're not good for your customer. Um, you can't treat your, your customers right, right? You can't really serve them at a high level for cheap money. Um, you know, when folks come to me and want my help, I, and they're like, well, you know, I don't know, is it expensive, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I don't know what other coaches charge, but I guarantee I ain't the cheapest. And if anything, I want to be the most expensive. That said, I want to make sure I'm the guy that everybody says, oh my gosh, Mike would, uh, you know, open up a vein and bleed for me if he thought it would help me grow his business. So I want you guys and gals to be that same thing where we charge enough, but we, um, we were able with those resources to do a kick butt job and really to serve our people at a high level. <clears throat> good morning, Mario. Uh, good morning, charismatic commercial cleaning. We got everybody going on. So let's jump into some of these beliefs that are going to help and hurt and tell you exactly how to set this up so you can um, serve people at a high level. We can make profit doing it and we can get the right customers at the right price. So first and foremost, we got to blow up the crazy belief that um, customers want the lowest price. I think we start there and it just goes downhill. Um, that is not the reality. The reality is um, oftentimes we haven't educated our customers on what's right. So they default to price, right? If I'm like, hey, do you want this table or that table? This one's 500 bucks and this one's 1,000 bucks. And you don't know anything else about the tables. Um, assuming you want a table, you're gonna pick the 500 bucks, right? Everyone is. So that's 
the problem is most people only talk with what do you want clean? How often do you want clean carpenter, you know, carpenter or hardwood floor? How many square feet? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and they give a price. So when that's it, like everybody bid on the same building, right? We only have the one building and everybody bid on the same nights. And there's really no other conversation beyond that. Um, they, they have to pick on price. We haven't helped them. And that's our fault, right? We blame them for being cheap. But the problem is they're doing exactly what we would do, right? Now, if I told you one table... Um, you know, has a weight limit of 20 pounds and your kid likes to play under the table. And if you put a 21 and a half pound turkey on, it's going to fall down and crush your child. Well, obviously the $500 table is not so good. Um, Dan says, are we early or is Mike late? Um, I don't know. I'm, we're going, Dan. <laughs> Hopefully you're hearing me, buddy. Uh, but we're going, man. All right. So the, the, the deal is, right, I just educated you on my make-believe table. And now everybody, hopefully, <laughs> wants, the, uh, you know, wants the expensive table because they really want a problem solved. So nobody wants cleaning services. They want a problem solved. And, if you can't, and they certainly they want it solved for the cheapest price. But the problem is, all right, Dan's in. Good to have you, buddy. Um, the problem is most people don't, and Miguel's in the house. I have not heard from T Mama Gloria in so long. I miss you, brother. Uh, tell your, your bride and your mama I said, hey, and uh, love you guys. You're the best. All right, so um, it is our job to educate customer on the right thing. If we don't give them any information other than what we're going to clean, which is going to be the same as everybody else, and please, please, please don't come at me with my cleaning's better. They don't want the better cleaning, right? They want their needs, right? So we got to understand what their needs are, and then we have to educate them on the fact that we know what their needs are, and then we can um, then we can give a price to solve their pain. As long as we're solving their pain, they're much, 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 much more interested in that than um, having than it being the cheapest price, right? Like I was talking with my bride, um, we were lucky enough uh, or blessed enough, I should say, to have a first class ticket when we came home. Uh, uh, and I was telling her we were supposed to leave last night and um, the plane didn't take off. There was maintenance issues, big storm in Charlotte, blah, 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 blah. I told her I would have gladly traded my first class ticket in uh, for this morning <laughs> for a, a, a place in the with the baggage under the plane as long as I wouldn't die leaving last night, right? So again, it's it, it wasn't about price. It was about needs. And if they said, well, we can get you more fancy this and first class – all great, but I really wanted the plane to take off on time. So we, a lot of times we're selling our customers on first class or a special clean or the thing that we think that they want, but we don't even understand what it is that they want, right? And um, that lack of understanding makes us, A, not under, be able to really solve their pain, and then, B, not charge enough to solve their pain. And then they're frustrated with us because we're not doing what they really want, and we're not doing um, – we're not making any money, and we're making our customers mad. It's a lose, lose, lose. <laughs> Lori from Flip Flop Cleaners, probably my favorite. I don't, I'm not saying it's a good name in terms of client attraction. Maybe it is, but it's probably my favorite name and just in terms of saying Flip Flop Cleaners. <laughs> Love it, Lori. All right. Um, so make sure that we educate our folks. So when they say, I want the lowest price – I would probably start with some questions. Great. So you're okay with no uh, liability or general comp or uh, workers' compensation or general liability insurance because we can certainly save you some money if I could eliminate those. Oh, you do want those sorts of insurance. Great. How about legal workers? I'm sure I could find some poor uh, illegal worker that we could all take advantage of and pay him a nickel or her a nickel. Oh, no, you don't want that. Oh, that okay. I, well, that costs money. <laughs> How about uniforms? Are you interested in things like that? How about, you know, there's once we start digging in, they start going, they start realizing they don't want the lowest price. They really want their problem solved. And a lot of the things that cost money, um, they, uh, you know, do you want your people taking the bus to work? So if the bus breaks down or if they miss the bus, they don't come clean your place. You know, just, you start asking some obvious questions. We can help educate them what they really want. What they really want is a solution to their problem at a fair price. Um, Lori says, I work a lot on the beach in my flip-flops. Lori, you are my dadgum hero. Uh, if your customers will tolerate you cleaning your flip-flops, you are my new favorite person. I coach in my boxer sometimes. Don't tell my clients. Oh, crap. So my clients are here. So I guess we're okay. <laughs> if they'll tolerate me coaching in boxers, you can, you can clean them flip-flops, Lori. All right, um, let's move on. So another belief is we sell a commodity, right? My clean is the same as their clean or my clean itself has to be better. That's how I win. I clean better than the next guy. Again, that's another, ugh, it's another false belief that's not going to cost you money. It is going to cost you money, but it's also going to cost you customers and, and happiness and frustration, all sorts of stuff. Uh, Miguel's jumped in on the Lori train. He also is digging the, uh, uh, the flip-flop cleaning. That's awesome. All right, so the the reality is cleaning is probably one of the lowest needs that we can solve, right? That is a commodity for me to take out the garbage or you to take out the garbage or the next guy to take out the garbage or sweep or mop or dust is low value. Um, and again, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to I don't want you guys to think that 
we're, I'm demeaning our trade because I'm not. It's very important. But if we connect with people on I take out the trash better, I use better chemicals, or I use I sweep better, or any of that stuff, that's, I don't want to say it's a hard sale, but I'm not really distinguishing myself from it. everyone else that's going to say the same thing. We want to connect on a higher need. We want to connect with your values and your mission, right? Ideally, um, and I'm going to start doing this more myself because I, I feel like I've, I'm always coaching core values. I'm not living core values as much as I have in my, in my brick and mortar businesses. And that's over. We're going to start, we're going to start doing that. So for me, it's have fun, make money, be real and help out. And that is who I'm looking for people that connect with. And there's some people that think that's stupid. Have fun at work. That sounds ridiculous. They're not going to like me and I'm not going to like them. There's no need for me to try and help them, right? It's people that don't care about helping out. I'm not going to hire them. I don't want to be a part of them. That's a big, important thing for us, right? Uh, so our whole business is helping owners of cleaning companies, helping to uh, transform cleaners into owners and making every community better by equipping owners like you to offer more opportunity and jobs and really serve people to, at a deeper level. So it's really important that instead of just trying to clean, we connect with people on a higher level, right? We invite them to play into our game and we tell them the rules of our game, which is our core values. For me, it's have fun, make money, be real and help out. So you want to make sure that you're crazy clear on your core values. You've got them loud and clear and you invite people to play. And the people that are into having fun and making money and being real and helping out in my circumstance are going to connect with that at a really deep level and want to be a part, which is awesome, right? And they're going to want to refer – you guys are going to want to refer people for – you know, there's three or four or five customers I think I've got on here. Feel free if you guys want to share your experience or refer customers. That's fantastic, right? Because – not because you want to help me or be, be – hopefully because we've changed your life and you want to – you find other people that you know desperately need – uh, that kind of transformation, right? So we want to move from cleaning crap to serving people a higher l level, connecting on, on values and mission, inviting them to play in the game that you play, right? So we are about transforming uh, owners or cleaners into owners, which to me is a huge mission, right? And I love, I love, nothing makes me happier than seeing single moms who are cleaning 40 hours a week actually get to spend time with their kids again. Or um, dads that were barely paying bills, able to add clients and, change, and transform their business in the way that they do pricing so they can um, actually build something that's a legacy for their kid. Um, all that good stuff. So we want to move from the commodity of we clean or we clean better to we connect on a higher level. We, we have, we, you know, enjoy, join us on a mission, right? So for me, if I said, hey, we do coaching and cleaning companies. If you'd like your cleaning company to be a little better, give me some money. I'm guessing some people would sign up for that and that'd be great. But if I said, Hey, we want to change the world. We want to free owners of cleaning companies, thousands of owners of cleaning companies, single moms, hardworking dads, families, more time with their kids and empower them to change the communities that they're in and hire people and give opportunity to other single moms, and other dads that want to help their family or send money back home for some of us. Uh, you know, I had lots of, uh, Im legal immigrant folks that were, um, just awesome that, it, you know, it was so cool that we were able to help them uh, send money back to their family. So instead of just trying to clean, we want to help invite people into our mission and what we're doing. All right. Um, another belief that is going to kill you. It is really hard to grow a business if you have this belief, uh, period. It's just hard. Um, the belief that you are serving your customer at a higher level or doing a better job when you're cheap is going to eat your lunch and it's going to eat your customer's lunch. That's a crazy thing. A lot of times we think it's win-lose, right? If they, if I charge more money, I win and they lose. But if I charge less money, they they win and I lose. That's not the case. When you charge less money, you lose and they lose. When you charge the right amount, a profitable amount, you win and they win, right? And we've got to educate our customers on that. When you don't, we kind of talked about this for a minute at the beginning. When you don't have enough money, you can't hire the best people. You can't provide the service that you said you were going to provide, right? We have to make sure that you have enough money for three things. One, to hire good people and, and treat them fairly. Because again, it's, you're not serving anybody, including your customer, if you, if you charge less to hire, uh, to not treat your employees well. Two, you have to have enough money to do the job that you promised them to do. And maybe a little extra, right? To really do a good job might take a little extra money to do a surprise and delight or marketing or client attraction or have the good insurance or kind of uh, step up, right? And then three, if you're not making profit, and so many of you guys are so amazing, such amazing human beings, you're like, it's okay if I don't make any money. And you don't say that, but I coach you and you're not making any money, but you'll do it to serve your customers. Um, if you're not making money, <laughs> This is not sustainable, right? So you might, the best way to be, uh, to help the poor is not to be the poor, 
right? So it's really important that you guys are profitable. And it's one thing if you're charging, you know, I think we feel like we're taking advantage when we make money. We coach to a 20% net profit. I have no problem. If you are cleaning a $1,500 a month commercial building and you're like all the management and employees and insurance and infrastructure and training and time that I put in to do this and understand your needs and serve them at a high level, if that's not worth 300 bucks in profit, it costs me 1200 in, in, in payroll and overhead. I just want to make 300 bucks. If that's not fair to that guy, he thinks I'd rather have it for 1200 and have you make nothing. That's not your right customer. You do not want to serve that those people, right? For all of you guys, you're such a blessing in my life. If anyone said, I don't care if you and Natalie starve, I just want you to, to coach me for free. First of all, you're never going to get results. I can't coach people. I gave you more committed to your business than you are. But also, I'm not, I don't want to serve that kind of a customer. I want someone that's like, I'd see the value in what you do and I'm willing to pay for it. That's the customers that we want. So, at the beginning, if they're uneducated and they choose price, that's on us. We haven't educated them. Once we have educated them on what we're, what value we're really bringing and the rules that we want to play, if we try to connect at core value level, um, if they still want price, then they've raised their hand and said, I'm not the right customer. It's totally fine to go. Uh, move to the next person. But the, the answer is not to lower prices. I mean, could you guys imagine if you know I was serving the community that I serve with you guys and one guy's like, ah, you're too expensive. I'm like, okay, I'll do it cheaper. That's I'm screwing everybody else that's paid the full price and, and really invested themselves. And I'm screwing the guy that I've lowered the price for because he's not going to be committed like he needs. So we've got to, got to, got to change our mindset that uh, if I'm cheap, if I lower my prices, I'm serving my customers better. You are not. You're not serving you, your employees, your customers, or the community. Arturo's in. Good to have you, brother. All right. Another issue is feeling all customers are the same, right? A lot of times we get confused because this guy treats us this way and that guy treats us another. We don't really look at why. The reality is the pre-frame matters. Say that again. The pre-frame matters. My favorite folks to help are referrals. I think Jason was referred to me by, uh, what's his face in, in Nashville, I think. Um, there's just, just, so many people have reached out and said, Oh my gosh, we've changed, you've changed my life. I want to help change somebody else's life. Those are my favorite, favorite. Hey, Brian, good to have you, buddy. Uh, and Tammy in the house, we got everybody going. My favorite folks to help are referrals. And I want, um, and those are a great preframe, right? So we've got to understand the folks that come from referrals are probably going to be your best folks. John says, good day. Well, I say good day to you, sir. <laughs> we've got one classy guy in the, in the room. Um, all right. So the preframe is really important. If they Google cheapest cleaning service in Tallahassee, that preframe is a, a tough one, right? So it's really important that we attract, not chase, the right customers as opposed to trying to convince the wrong folks, right? So instead of me having a direct mail campaign or Google AdWords thing or whatever, I bring everyone coming here, right? I want to make sure that you guys come here and I can educate you on um, – who I am and what I believe and how I serve and the folks that aren't a fit are just going to wander off. But the folks that uh, are a fit are going to be a great fit. So the pre-frame matters. So for you guys, you want to make sure if it's just somebody that's like, I'm frustrated with my cleaning company, I'm going to call the, the top five people I think are cheap. That pre-frame is terrible. Very hard to sell those folks or help those folks really. Um, but when you get a referral, that's a great one. You can really help them because they're I don't want to say their defenses are down, but their trust level is high. And as long as you're not trying to take advantage of them, you can use that high trust level to serve them at a deeper level. So make sure you understand the pre-frame and where they came from and influence the pre-frame, right? If I just waited for you guys to come to me and some were good and some were bad, it'd be tough. But I, you know, I, I, I do my best to serve the, at such a high level that I get lots of referrals. I do a bunch of free stuff like this where I try to give as much value so the people that come will already pre-frame properly. So we want to make sure that you take control of your pre-frame and control your lead flow. Nothing worse than people like, the only people that call are one-time cleaners and they're super cheap. Well, what do you do for client attraction? Nothing. I'm on Google AdWords, you know, some guy I pay that I don't even know what keywords he's looking for. So we've got to take charge of the pre-frame as opposed to just kind of being victims and going, well, my people are cheap. Uh, who else do we have? Um... Carmen says, I noticed that franchises lower their prices. How to compete with that? Everything we're talking about is going to compete with that. Um, Carmen, make sure we are attracting the people in the right way. We're educating people on what value we really bring. We're connecting with them at a, at a deep mission level. Um, we're pre-framing them right, right? If they just left the franchise because uh, they were, quote, unquote, too expensive, that's the wrong pre-frame, right? The good news about franchises, guys, gals, they're to you know, typically a 10 or, you know, depending on the franchise, 10 or 20% uh, disadvantage because all that goes to the, the, the franchise or you guys don't have. So um, it's actually much, much better. Ed from Ed Calderon says, hi, from top, top choice cleaning service. TJ says, lowering your price creates stress for you and your employees. You're absolutely right. It does. You'll put unnecessary pressure on customers and employees alike. If you lower your prices to get the job. Yes, yes, yes. A thousand times. Yes. 
TJ. So uh, another one that is killing us, and I hate it, hate it, hate it. I'm going to work really hard from this platform that uh, you guys have been kind enough and loving enough to give me to change this. But we have this belief out there, when your competition wins, you lose. That is crazy talk. You've got to get over that. We that I don't even take customers that have that. If, if he gets a, a client, I lost a client. If I steal a client from him, he or she's, you know, we, we've kind of beat each other. That is not it. I got to tell you, especially as kind of being at the center of this amazing community of Cleaning Nation, the people that win the most are the most helpful, right? It makes me sick when I hear people go, oh, Mike, you've, you've changed my life. It's been amazing. And I'm like, great. You know, who else do you know that we can help change their life? Like, no, I don't want no one in my town. Right. Or it's so funny that the one question that could go either way, depending on why they're asking is, well, how many other people are in your program in my city? Right. Well, it depends. And again, what the answer is the answer. But there's one of two reasons they're asking. One is I'm afraid if they've got the secret sauce and I have the secret sauce, we're not going to be. That's crazy talk. You know, and typically these guys have like one and a half percent or less than one percent of all the revenue in the city. And the other guy has like one and a half. So combined, they've got 2% of it. And they're worried about, um, they're worried about this guy taking it away. The best is who else is in my city? Why? Well, because I want to connect with them and I want to maybe you know, start a, a, an, an offline. In addition to what we're doing here, I want to start a, an accountability group and I want to see if we can maybe get all the cleaning companies together. Maybe we could share employees, right? There's so much value you can bring each other that just goes into the garbage when we're so worried about, I got to get mine. I got to get mine. I got to get mine. So Really, really important. Um, yeah, Jeremy says so many people don't get this. There's only so many buildings you can clean. Um, yeah, so you can't keep it unless you give it away. Omar, bring in the wisdom. Absolutely love it. So that is a huge, huge thing that I found. And when I was young and dumb, I was always thinking of my competition by the competition. It cost me so much in terms of frustration and stress and growing slower. Your competition, and again, only the people, this, same with customers. So if I have competitions that aren't about helping out and aren't about making money, they're not about having fun and not about doing the right thing, um, I'm not going to connect with them. And again, not that, but I'm still not going to feel like if I win or I take something from them, they lose or vice versa, right? I want to make sure that um, we're, I still support them in the best way. And if they're a core values match, I want to know them personally and support them. Perfect example, Debbie Sardone, great coach. If you uh, have a, a residential cleaning company, uh, she's a, well, she's an amazing human being, whether you do or don't, but she focuses only on residential. And um, we'll, I don't say we'll throw customers one another, but if someone said, I want to work with Debbie, I love that woman. She's so sweet, so cool. And I don't see it as a lost customer for me. She's got different core values. She does different things. And if you're a better fit and she's going to help you get the result that you want in your world better, I absolutely want you to go to Debbie, right? Uh, and vice versa. She's been so generous with me. Every time she comes into town, we go out to dinner. My wife and I have had dinner with she, And we're, all we care about is how can we help this community better? That relationship, so much more valuable than if I'm like, screw her. And I down talked her to all of you guys and vice versa. It would be insane because she's such a great person. And she's got so much value to, to offer this community. And I, I promise you there are competition. I'm doing a huge quote because competition kind of makes it sound like win-lose in your area. Um, it, Lori says, I've tried referring customers to my competitions. They have issues with that and told me they can get their own clients. Um, so again, it can be about referring clients, but it's more about, yeah, perfect. Robert's like, hey, I'm in, I'm in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, if anyone wants to connect. We just left South Carolina, uh, Robert. And I think I've spoken to Robert before. So yeah, I, now I'm not saying you just randomly send customers to folks, right? I've met Debbie. I would Before I'd met her, I would never send a customer to because I didn't know her, right? She might be a terrible human being. But because we've got this relationship, I respect her as a person. I know she's a, she cares deeply deeply about this, this community, I'll absolutely refer her people. So it's not just about randomly referring people. It's about really building, uh, 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 you see, look at this Jeremy, just bringing the heat. I've got a contact with bar rescue for those who want national and free advertising. Shoot me a message. So I love us helping each other's cleaning nation. And, uh, if you find the show valuable, bring people to it. Don't be like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta squirrel away my information. That's crazy. Uh, I forget the last live event. Somebody made a good point. Like, Hey, if someone just listened to all the podcasts, they could probably get just about as much information as when you coach them. Yeah, probably. Right. I don't hide it or like squirrel away. I can't, I can't let anyone know. I just desperately want to serve this community. And then folks are like, I just need help. And I want Mike to hold my hand and really walk me through and make sure I get results. Great. I, they'll pay. And the folks that don't, that's okay. <laughs> you know, That's totally okay. So we really want to keep in the mindset of how can I give and serve this community? And then we'll always make money. If it's always, how can I get mine? Screw everyone else. I, there are, I've seen people make money with that. I just don't know how to do it. So I couldn't coach you how to do that. All right. Last thing we're going to go over is the wrong customers. Um, the, um, the, the last thing is your customers don't want you to make money. The reality is 
the uneducated customers may not make you want you to make money or the, and we talked, we hit on this. I just want to make sure I clearly say it. Or if they're interested, they're the, and they still, if they're educated and they know what you do and how you serve and what your core values are and what value you really bring. And like, yeah, I would rather save 200 bucks and have you make no profit. That's the wrong customer. <laughs> the, the goal is not to fix our pricing to, to modify this nut job. It's to get a not nut job in front of us. Right? So, it's totally, it's totally fine. Um, John says, I'm interested. Don't know what you're interested in, buddy, but all of our information is at growingcleancompany.com. Or if you put a question here, I'll do my best to answer it. Lori says, I'm thinking about moving up that way. The only thing stopping is fearing my starting company over. Yeah, it's tough to move. Uh, I love, I love, love, love this community. Um, we're talking about connecting and sharing with people and immediately you guys are already connecting and sharing. I freaking love that. Uh, for those of you that aren't on this live broadcast and listen to the podcast or uh, on the video, you know, the YouTube channel, go to growingcleaningcompany.com to connect with your other folks. We have a Facebook group with over 6,000. I think it might be 7,000. There's thousands of owners of cleaning companies. Um, connect there. And of course, this live feed right now is a great place. John Casper's trying to connect. Love, love, love. You guys taking action. Um, Okay, I think that's it. So the, the summary is when you attract the right customers, you can command premium pricing, you can provide premium service, you can attract premium employees, and all of that will help you enjoy a premium profit. And I promise it is really important for you to make a profit. Again, if you want to help poor, you cannot be poor. And um, the good people are going to want you to make a fair profit. And 20% is more than most. That's what we coach to. But it's certainly not um, it's certainly not exorbitant. Anyone that thinks that's too much is crazy. Uh, Natalie posted uh, the Facebook group. It's growingcleaningcompany.com forward slash Facebook. Um, okay. So any of you that are like, oh, my gosh, this is scratching where I itch. I desperately I want Mike to help me. Um, we have a free resource. I want you to go to growingcleaningcompany.com right now. We've got a complimentary I said that weird, complimentary <laughs> free masterclass on how to grow your cleaning company, how to go from cleaning to owning, how to go from owning to scaling, and how to Im implement all these things that we've talked about in your cleaning business. Um, so if you would like that, go to growmancleaningcompany.com. It is a totally free resource. Uh, it is a masterclass on exactly kind of the best I could distill down into, I think it's just under an hour, um, the best I could do in that short amount of time. So go there right now, check it out. Uh, again, if you want to connect with the community, go to the Facebook group, growingcleaningcompany.com forward slash Facebook. You guys are amazing. So glad to be back. Uh, not only am I home, <laughs> not in an airport, but with my family. And I really appreciate you guys. And I, I want to do my best to not just help you guys make more money, but really transform the communities that you're in and serve at a higher level and not just get a bigger company that's not profitable or not offering a higher or deeper level of service, but really change the communities that we're in, not just for us and our families, but for our employees, uh, our customers, our vendors, and everybody. So you guys are amazing. Uh, Michelle says she needs help scaling. Would love to help Michelle. Just go to growingcleancompany.com uh, and check out that masterclass. That's a great first step. And there's some stuff at the end that'll help you take the next step. Uh, TJ says another mindset to adopt is to purchase the way you want others to buy. That is so true. Uh, TJ is a uh, client of ours or former, I don't I wouldn't say former client because we still love him. He's still in the family. Um, but you're absolutely right. Um, if you go out and you're always trying to grind and <laughs> it's embarrassing, but I, I always want to be one of our core values, be real. I want to be real with you guys. That's how I was. When I, when I was young, I was grinding. I always try to get the best price and negotiate and blah, 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 blah. And guess what? Um, that's how people would treat me and my services. And it made sense to me because of I would grind. Why wouldn't they grind? Right. It's crazy. Since I've gotten older and I, I, I dare I say matured, <laughs> probably not. I don't know if I've matured, but I've gotten older. I've realized if I want something, I just pay for it. And if I can't afford it or it's not worth it to me, I don't negotiate. Just don't pay for it. That's okay. If I want the nice thing or the expensive thing or the good thing, I'll buy it. Or if it's not something I feel like can or want to afford, I won't. And I found almost no price resistance when people are buying from me because I have that mindset of this is premier coaching. I'm, I'm here to really transform. Could you get a hobo under a bridge to coach you for a nickel? Probably. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but that's not what I do. If you really want high level help, then you pay a high level price and people don't push back. So absolutely you will buy the way that you sell. So, or people will buy from you the way that you buy from them. So, um, make sure that I shouldn't say make sure from my experience, I have found when I go to buy things, I don't negotiate. I don't grind. Uh, if I don't think it's a fair price, I just wait or buy something else. And I do pay, pay, pay it's a fair price. I, uh, uh, I pay it. Actually, one of my, uh, I don't want to say heroes, but certainly mentors, Joel Weldon, great speaker. Uh, he's helped me with my speaking career. Um, one of the stories he tells is how he, he uh, when people sometimes will say, here's how much it costs. He says, I won't pay it. I'm not going to pay it. It's not fair. It's not enough. 
I want to pay you more, right? Any times he's had people, I think I've done that with vendors that have been great and um, haven't charged enough for their service. I said, not fair, not going to pay. I'm going to pay more. I want to pay a fair price. So um, always, and again, he charges a premium price for his service and by golly, he's worth it. So great point, TJ. Really enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Go to GrowMyKinneyCompany.com. Check out the masterclass right now. Can't wait to see all of you guys, gals and Cleaning Nation, have the opportunity to serve you going forward. Really enjoy you folks. Have a great day and we will talk again today's Thursday. We're going to go live again Thursday. I'll talk to you then. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you're fired up, ready to grow, and want to see if you have what it takes to work with us at Grow My Cleaning Company, here's what I want you to do right now. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. That's growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk to book an appointment to speak with me personally. I'm going to jump on the phone with you to get you crystal clear on where you are now, where you want to be, and how to get you there. Don't walk around in the dark any longer. If you are serious about growing your cleaning company, it's time to finally get the systems in place that you need to grow. We've helped hundreds of owners of cleaning companies not only grow their business and their personal freedom, but give back to their community as well. If that's what you're looking for, head over to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk and book a time to talk with me personally. I can't wait to get to know you and your business.